hi there, and welcome to Check It Out. I'm your host, Deborah Cedillo Dugan. Sit back, relax, and take in all that the Phoenix Public Library has to offer. There are 17 Phoenix Public Libraries, so there's one near you. Each library is unique in their own way, but they're all one when it comes to serving you. There's a hidden gem in North Phoenix, and they're celebrating a milestone. There's also a pretty cool program where you can get your hands dirty and have fun while doing it. Chuck Emmert experienced it all. We're at the Acacia Library Branch in Sunny Slope. Now this library is celebrating its 50th birthday soon. Inside, there's more than just books. In fact, this library has a section that will help you grow what you know. Today's librarian has to know more than just searching out books with the Dewey Decimal System. They can help you find any information you need. They can help get your kids ready for school. And they even know a little bit about gardening. A lot of our customers feel that there are, they know that there are DVDs, they know that there are books, but they haven't really had a chance to understand what other collections we have. And one of the ones that we really are proud of is our seed library. You could access it at 12 of our branches. And really, it's a, such a simple concept. If you have your Phoenix Public Library card, you can come in and check out up to three packets during a three-week period, and you have access to herbs, vegetables, flowers, and can grow them in your home and in your community. If you don't know how to grow things in the desert, there are a lot of things that you can do, a lot of ways that you can teach yourself how to grow those things. Again, we have books, we have online videos, and we offer classes, and so if you are wondering how to do that, then you will be able to find that information here. We definitely choose our seeds to make sure that you get the best possible growth out of them. We don't choose seeds that grow in colder climates, we definitely make sure that they are seeds that you will be successful with. There's a thing called container gardening, so you can get a container and depending on what type of flower or vegetable that you're trying to grow, it can usually grow within a small pot. So you can take one of those, if you have a small patio or if you have a, a window in your house, you can do that. We do have plenty of different resources. A lot of our staff are really knowledgeable in gardening as well. So you can usually find the answer to your question when you have one. Part of all of the community resources we have here at Acacia Branch, so come check it out. The Acacia Library Branch, like the tree it's named after, has deep roots in the Sunny Slope area. And just like the community it represents, it has a diverse range of resources, materials, and services. Acacia is one of our, what we call our neighborhood libraries, and it's really very special to the Sunny Slope community. There's been a library here since 1928, when the Knights of the Round Table um, made a $1,300 donation and opened the first one. The City of Phoenix came in and took over the Desert Mission Library in the 1950s. and thus we built Acacia here and opened it in 1969. So what we're hoping to do in 2019 as we come up on Acacia's 50th anniversary is to really honor the, the role that the library has played to this community. And we're focusing our celebrations around honoring that tradition. Everyone knows that we have lots of books and resources and, and um, magazines and all sorts of things like that, but Acacia is so much more than that to the community. We have things like Kids Cafe, where after school we provide nutritious snacks and meals for the children in the community. We have story time and early literacy programs for children and families. We have literacy and workforce programs and all sorts of things going on at the library. It really is a community hub and that's what we're going to celebrate. We are a place of learning, um, a place of being able to access resources, access the internet and computers. Um, we, are, we are a way to connect so many things to the people in their communities and that's what we want to be is to be able to, to, to connect people to the resources they want so that they can make the changes and the learning in the lives that they want to be. Phoenix Public Library has something for everybody so come check it out. The Acacia Branch is a small library with a cozy feel and a friendly atmosphere. Standing inside, you really get a feel of the history here in the Sunny Slope community. Deborah, you should check it out. 
Well, maybe I will check it out. In fact, I love seeds. You know, I grew this plant, or at least tried to, but whoever said I had a green thumb? Well, now we're going to go to the West Valley and discover a library that is a beacon in the community. Eric Moreno has more. Thank you, Deborah. Tucked away just on the outskirts of Desert Sky Mall is a Desert Sage branch of the Phoenix Public Library. It's a little hidden, but once you find it, you'll see that they have a treasure trove of things that they have to offer. Everyone's heard about story time at the library, but at this library, babies can learn how to read and how to sign. Hey, We, we teach the parents how to build better uh, learning environments for their, for their little ones. And you know, we're not their first teacher, the parents are, and that's what we try to teach the parents. Um, so we love having the, the parents here with their babies. Um, the babies love being here. Um, and you know, we encourage parents to continue to do what they're doing. Um, come to the library, check out books, um, and continue to teach your kids how to read. Baby Time with Sign started a couple of years ago as part of a Phoenix Public Library initiative with our early literacy outreach team as well as First Things First. And it was all about um, childhood development in terms of language skills because we wanted to add another component to our story times that allowed for parents and children to communicate more easily. For Baby Time with Sign, it's definitely incorporating aspects of American Sign Language, but it's modifying it for children. Um, since children are learning more about fine and gross motor skills, it's really important that we be able to facilitate signs that they're actually able to use and incorporate in daily daily life. We recently learned about apples and bananas in story time because if you're hungry, um, you might want to be able to say, I'd like a banana or I, I need an apple. Um, but you will sometimes see kids just make a fist and put it to their cheek. So even though it's not an exact translation of, you know, using your finger to indicate apple, um, parents can still understand the gist of what their child is saying. So in a lot of our story times, we'll incorporate shakers. They can be like maracas, they can be egg shapes, it's just anything that jingles. So with shakers, they're able to listen to the sound that it's making. They're also able to work on opening and closing their hands. Again, working on those fine and gross motor skills, getting their hands moving. With parachutes, um, sometimes it's just fun to stand under the parachute and just see all the colors that are above you just really engaging um, families in movement. So story time isn't just about sitting down and reading a book, it's also about singing, it's also about learning, it's about playing, it's about being social. How are you guys doing today? Good. I'm here to read a book to you guys today, okay? So what we do is I go outreach to different um, services, different places, different community centers, whether it's libraries, agencies, the city of Phoenix, anything that has to do with community-based. What I do is I go reach out, I get information, and I give it to the community. Marsha uh, stopped by the library and I came out to meet her. One day I was walking around and I walked into the library and I met Miss Leon and she was awesome. We fit like a glove. And it's been a really positive relationship. Uh, she's very enthusiastic about just going out into the community and bringing resources back to her school. Okay, friends, let's sing our ABCs. Okay, ready, okay. A, B, C. With the boot camp program, they do a lot of different things. They prepare them for kindergarten, you know, which means follows as such as learning their numbers or ABCs or coloring, all kinds of different various things that a kindergarten needs to know. 34, 35, 36, 37. With children at our school, usually they have younger siblings. So once they see the information, they come here and they either check out books or they do the toddler time or preschool boot camp. There's just so many different various things that we do. Wow, good job friends, give yourself a hand. Okay, I think we We're finding out that there's a lot of wonderful things for kids here at Desert Sage, but grown-ups will also discover a lot of great community resources as well. We have a primarily Hispanic community, uh, so I felt there was a need for bringing in adult programs that focused on meeting those needs. Uh, we have ESL classes that really help uh, teach English uh, to this community. Um, we also have our citizenship prep, which helps serving a population that is really actively pursuing uh, obtaining their citizenship. 
we have uh, bilingual staff. We like to welcome everybody. We want people to feel comfortable. We want to make sure that our customers are being greeted. If they have any questions about our program, um, you know, what other uh, programs are going on? Are there other resources? Do they need a library card? Do they have children with them? We want to make sure that they, they understand what the library is all about. So come to the library and check it out. After having the privilege of visiting Desert Sage Library for myself, I discovered just how strong the community vibe is present. Lots of resources for people of all ages. So Deborah, it's definitely worth checking out. Thanks Eric, now you can see why so many people are attracted to Desert Sage. Stay with us. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom got me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. Mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another bad day. I really hope we don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. I love to read, but you know what's really fun is when you're reading the same book at the same time with somebody else. There's actually a name for that, and yes, the library has that too. Thanks, Deborah. I'm here at Century Library, and behind me is the Friends Book Club. It's a small group of about 12 people who come here to socialize and transform their reading experience. The Century Library has a, a pretty strong book club. They meet, actually they have two, they meet twice. They have a mystery book, uh, book club, and then they have one that's just more general, general fiction or current events. Um, and they're very strong. They're strongly attended, and they work closely with the library staff here to make selections um, and ensure that their book club members um, are picking books that they'll be able to check out at Phoenix Public Library. And, um, and then they come down and they make use of all the other things that the library offers. In addition to all the benefits of reading, it also offers a social interaction platform in a couple of different environments. So something online, or they can still come into a library and interact one-on-one -on -one and in person. Um, a book club offers a way for people to continue to fine tune and hone their reading skills, but then also expand their knowledge base and then um, be able to talk to each other about that. We've all heard of book clubs, but what keeps members coming back? Many people make it a regular part of their lives, like Judy Kendall. Well, I think everybody should join a book club. Uh, it opens up a whole new variety of types of books to read and uh, gives one a chance to discuss the book and other ideas about the book that you might not have uh, been aware of. I've been a, a member of the uh, Mystery Book Club since 2015, and I saw a notice here uh, after I retired and started coming to the Mystery Book Club on Thursdays. If they hadn't had money, she never would have had money. That's right. When gets a chance to uh, discuss what they've read and to hear other sides of the story and not just your own. And we also have the Wednesday Book Club, which is uh, any type of book. Our members select, uh, uh, each month we'll select a book that interests them. So it can be fiction, nonfiction, a biography, it can be any type of book. The Killers of the Flower Moon is a book about the Osage Indians in Oklahoma in the 1920s. And there were 24 murders. And uh, the book details uh, how the murders were caught by the newly formed FBI. And if they do this, there are so many cases of convicted murders that are going to be thrown out of court mm -hmm. because... I think it has uh, opened up many new types of uh, books that perhaps I wouldn't have read because they've been um, part of the book club. Check our website, phoenixpubliclibrary.org. Go to our calendar and you can find a book club by a library location. We have 17 locations and almost all of them offer a regular book club schedule. Checking out the book at the library is free as well as participating and coming down and enjoying all the library has to offer. We are always going to endorse reading. So we want everybody to read. Uh, find something that you love and come check it out at Phoenix Public Library. 
This book actually sounds interesting. I have a couple of books here. The book club has me inspired to read, and who knows? I just might join a book club myself. Deborah. I actually have been part of a book club at various times in my life, and I've actually loved it. I love the discussion, the commentary. In fact, you may learn a tidbit or two. Hi everyone, I'm Julie Waters, Communications Director for the City of Phoenix, and joining me is Rita Hamilton, City Librarian. We are here in the children's section at Burton Bar Central Library. Rita, this is one of your favorite spots in this beautiful building. Tell us why. Oh, of course, it's because of all the children. But we have some very wonderful things here in this library and in this children's space. As you walk in, you get the 100 best picture books all with multiple copies so everyone can see the very best things and pick them up right away. This is our story space, so we have storytellers here teaching the kids uh, the stories and showing parents how to read to their children and interact with their children to teach them reading. And then we also have these wonderful activities that are for the children to do that teach them the early literacy skills as well. Do you ever sneak out of your office and just come down here and be a fly on the wall with all these cute little kids? Absolutely. Yes. My very favorite time is when a classroom comes in, the teacher brings right. a whole classroom of children, and then they have their fun and start walking out, and they come with their books oh, yeah. and the big yeah. smiles. It's just wonderful. Yeah, that's great. So the other thing I notice when you walk into the children's section is you have computers. Yes. And technology is a regular part of modern day libraries across the globe, I'm sure, for those that you know have them in their systems oh, yes. there. Um, how do you balance that to make sure that we are still teaching the value of old fashioned books that you can read and the picture books and hold in your hands versus the modern day technology? How do you as a city librarian in a big city balance all of that? Well, we have it side by side. As you can see, we have computers and the books, and we make the books a little more attractive in the children's area. So they're, they're gorgeous picture books, and so they're very attractive. And we talk to parents during story time about the um, way to, tr to read a book to their children so that they're engaged. Wonderful. So we sort of teach both sides. Here you can use these electronic devices to do this part, but really reading and right. interacting with your child is the best way for them to learn. Now there are computers throughout this whole building also, so it's not just for children. Tell us about how you use technology throughout your whole library system. Well, technology is very pervasive, as you know, and of course with the advent of electronic books, um, we you can access those anytime, anywhere, so it makes the experience of a library, you can have it your own personal library on your phone, you can take it with you anywhere. So it's very integrated, and it just depends on what people are looking for. So from your perspective, there's no excuse people aren't reading books, right? That's correct, <laughs> as long as it's reading. Right, right. So give us an overview, and we've talked a little bit throughout this show of how many libraries we have in, in the city of Phoenix, but give us an overview from your perspective. How many buildings, how many staff, different things like that? We have 17 libraries, so there's 16 branch libraries in addition to the Burton Bar Central Library. We have nearly 500 staff, many of wow. which are part-time. Yeah. So it takes a lot of people to keep all the libraries in order and to cus do customer service for everyone that comes in. We have nearly 4 million visitors throughout the city in a year. Throughout all of your libraries? Yes. That are actually physically coming through the doors? Yes. How about that? 4 million a year. So tell us about the staff. Um, they have all different backgrounds, different degrees, and they really do love reading, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Librarians are very funny, very smart, and very creative. So they make great work companions, and they're very dedicated. So they really do want to help people find the information they need or, or learn the skill that they're looking to learn. Quickly, as we wrap up, do you have any message for everyone who's out there watching? Anything you want everyone out there to make sure they have in their wallet? Oh, definitely, <laughs> a library card. The library card is your ticket to all the great resources we have here at this library. The electronic ones, as well as all the print ones. And where do people go to get a library card in case you don't know? And you can do it online. Okay. Or you can come to any one of our 17 locations. Wonderful. Rita Hamilton, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. 
speaking of the last page, I just finished the suggested read from the book club. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for joining us.